Welcome back to Lotus on Track and Brands Hatch. We're supporting the DTM cars this weekend. The second round of the Lotus Cup UK currently being led by that man, Rob Fenn, as he is one of the late drivers to make his pit stop. We're well into the pit window here. Most of the field have come in, but Rob Fenn, having taken the lead from Adrian Hall, who we see on the screen there, just before the pit stop started, staying out on track to try and build an advantage for his father, David. Adrian Hall's pit stop is just about done. And I think he just knows to go when the team got bored there and just walked away. So Adrian Hall rejoins the race. He has got 25 minutes with which to do what he can to take his maiden victory in the Lotus Cup UK. Out onto track he comes just ahead of Chris Setters. He's over a lap ahead of Chris in reality as he tries now to come up onto the tail of the enduring production class battle between Stuart Plotnick and Ken Savage. Savage still leading that fight and therefore remaining third in the production class. There's the battle for production class on as they're just ahead of Rob Fenn. It's the blue car of Rob Boston and the yellow car of Fulvio Mussi. And don't forget two championships in the Lotus Cup UK this year. The regular Lotus Cup UK championship for cars such as the one being driven by Rob Fenn and then the production championship which at the moment is being very very keenly fought between Rob Boston and Fulvio Mussi and this is going to make it very tricky here for Rob Fenn to get past because they're so busy having the battle of their own. Well, scything through there was Rob Fenn, so he is able to put himself up ahead of Fulvio Mussi. His next target is going to be Rob Boston. And I'm sure that Boston will be looking at his mirrors for a yellow car, not a black and green one. And therefore, he should make this fairly straightforward for Rob Fenn. Well, he just sticks to the inside line and he decides to let Rob do the hard work, powers around the outside. But for Rob, this could be crucial because his father, David, isn't quite as quick as Rob. He's not been in the car for six months or so, and therefore Rob wants to give him as much of a buffer of, as possible after this pit stop cycle. So he turns through Druids now, as into the pit lane comes Jack Goff, so the Cleo Cup racer about to hand over to Phil Capstick. He comes to a halt now, and Phil is there waiting. Right, here is the leader, so Rob Fenn is in, flashing his lights to the John Danby Racing Squad who run the car. And they are right down very far into the pit lane. They wave him into his position. Comes to a halt. Get the driver changed very quickly. It's good. The mandatory minimum pit stop times in the Lotus Cup UK means that teams don't have to rush with making the driver changes. Everything can be done in good order in a very relaxed fashion. And that does mean that despite such huge grids the pit lane is really as safe as it could be in the Lotus Cup UK the organizers working very very hard to maintain that the drivers enjoying the DTM pit gantries aren't they more screens than they're normally used to as Phil Capstick rejoins the race hold on now go 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 waves the team as David Fenn rejoins the action now what could David do here where will he have fed out crucially in relation to Adrian Hall that's the gap we're going to have to watch for here did Rob Fenn do enough before the pit stops to build enough of a buffer well, coming around the outside of him, there is the Avora of Steve Williams. And Steve putting himself back onto the lead lap with that move. So he's just running outside the top 10. Steve Williams, and there's Adrian Hall. And Rob Fenn did the business, didn't he? My goodness, he's built about eight seconds or so of an advantage for Dad David over Adrian Hall. Now, let's see what Adrian can do about closing this gap back down. He goes past Neil Livesy, puts a lap back onto Neil, and now sets off in pursuit of... David Fenn, we've got just 17 minutes left in the race here. This is going to be a thrilling chase all the way through to the chequered flag. Also, Marcus Jewell should be discounted. There's Marcus in the 2.11. He's in third place, and he is not too far adrift either here. And in fact, Marcus Jewell, looking at the timing screens, is beginning to close in onto both leaders. He's really put together a turn of speed, having made an earlier pit stop. So this is not done and dusted yet, is it, for David Fenn? There's Adrian Hall. Here comes Marcus Jewell. So as David Fenn continues to leave, we'll head down to the pit lane to hear from his son, Rob. Hi, Rob. So it's looking hopeful for you? Yeah, it's a very interesting start to the race. It's over to my dad now. He hasn't been in the car for seven months, so he's um, in at the deep end. Hopefully he can uh, keep himself in front. Good luck to him. Warm words of support and encouragement then from Rob Fenn for Father David as he continues to try and put this lap on Steve Williams. And that Avora has got considerable straight line advantage over the little exige and therefore is able to hold on the ground straight. Finally, Steve moves aside, concedes the corner 
into Paddock Hill Bend. It's great to see the Avora though competing this weekend. Spectacular car. So still, David Fenn leads it. Adrian Hall looming ever larger. It's about 51 seconds or so lapping these cars. So every lap is another 51 seconds off the race clock, which has got 13 and a half minutes left on it. And that is really what David Fenn's going to bear in mind. He just needs to keep circulating ahead of Adrian Hall. See a replay. Well, I'm glad to see the Lotus Europa back in the race. Less pleased to see it spinning around Campbell Cassidy certainly pushing as he's back into the fray and all the while the gap between leads has really come down here and now David Fenn under considerable threat from Adrian Hall they go past Ian Berry put a lap on to Ian and Hall's going to have a look here at David as they accelerate on towards Paddock Hill Bend the sky blue car of Adrian Hall looks the outside of David Fenn as they turn through and they both arrive onto the tail of Ken Savage as well as they hoped for that on to Ken, who's a very quick driver in his own right. Ken sees them coming, gives them plenty of space in Struis. That's really very fair driving from Ken Savage. Same as well for Adrian Leicester, giving the leading duo ample opportunity to put the lap on them as they turn through Graham Hill Bend. And that has probably bought David Fenn a car length or thereabouts, no more than that. Short sprint on to Surtees. And no near the apex there was he David Fenn he was really really pushy but he's got to remain consistent and that's cost him a tenth or two because Adrian Hall now right up onto his tail he's within the car length and this could be the lap where Adrian Hall goes through he sells into the slipstream now behind David Fenn jostles to the outside now Fenn keeps that car there that should be enough to keep Adrian Hall behind him through Paddock Hill Bend it is timing screen showing a dead heat on the line though across the curbs goes Adrian Hall he's really pushing as they climb the hill to Druids once more. Looking to the outside is Adrian Hall. Hope that David Fenn slithers why He doesn't do that. That's a, a good run through Druids from David Fenn. He's making this very difficult for Adrian Hall because as long as he sticks to what he does best, which is just staying on the racing line, running at a quick and consistent pace, then it's going to be nigh impossible for Adrian Hall to get through. But if David Fenn starts doing that and preemptively defensive driving down the Cooper straight back, then brings Adrian Hall right onto his tail. And Hall's going to look here into the clearways. He goes up the inside. He takes the lead the race from David Fenn and that was all set up a couple of corners earlier when Fenn defended into Surtees he then couldn't hold the line through clearways and that gave the space for Adrian Hall to go through and take the lead of the race away from him another lap completed and Adrian Hall back at the head of the field where he was for so much the first phase of the race down through Paddock Hill Bend now what can Hall do about trying to pull away from David Fenn also still in the background there is Marcus Jewell so Feng was really good to latch himself onto the tail of Adrian Hall. Lest he risk being demoted from second to third. We've got just 10 minutes left on the clock here at Brands Hatch. So there is the opportunity if David Fenn were able to up his pace to get onto the tail of Adrian Hall and re-challenge for that lead. Great to see the three leaders running so closely together in the second round of the 2012 Lotus Cup UK. So it's easy on through clearways the lead. So we see a replay of the move for the lead. So yes, clouting the curbs there was David Finney. Carried their speed in. And that being had to go on the break so early for clearways. And immediately through goes Adrian Hall. Didn't quite see the start of the move, but essentially David Fenney took a very tight line in. He carried a lot of speed through the first section. That meant he carried too much speed out of Surtees. Had to get on the brakes to make clearways. And because of that, he couldn't cover the inside line. He left plenty of opportunity for Adrian Hall to go through and take the lead. And that is just what he did while he attempts to pull away. The next target to have a lap on them is Dave Carr. You may recognise Dave as having had a green car in seasons past, now an all black machine this year. So he goes lap down as David Fenn is slipping back into the clutches of Marcus Jewell as they close up onto the tail of, firstly, Charlotte Burridge. So Charlotte Burridge, taking over from Fulvio Mussi, is about to go a lap down. So we've got a car that's gone for the gravel trap there and looks to be quite heavily damaged. And that is in a very, very exposed position. So as he continues to work through the back markers here, Adrian Hall, got to bear in mind, we could potentially see a safety car. It's Phil Capstick, it was, who went off. And that's a lot of damage to the front of the Exige. The Marshals do what they can, but he's buried deeply into the gravel trap. And with a damaged car, it's going to be a precarious recovery at the very best. So as the leaders continue to work their way on through the traffic, and there was Jamie Stanley, who's worked up to fourth position in the Exige. So Stanley flying as well, making very good progress. The rest of the field very closely bunched. And yes, the red flag is out. The race has been stopped. 
I think the decision being taken with only seven and a half minutes left in the race that by the time a safety car recovery had been affected, the clock with a tick to zero nonetheless. We are well over half race distance and I suspect therefore that that will be a result. And there unfortunately is the sorry sight of Phil Capstick's car. Adrian Hall, he took the lead and on count back I make it that Adrian has won this race just from David Fenn. He made his move in retrospect on just the right lap because the lap later and he may not have won this one. So the pit lane is now being filled with the glorious sight of Lotuses lining up in the pit lane. They all want to restart but they see the chequered flag there which means that it's race over and we will very shortly get a declared result here at Brands Hatch following an absolutely scintillating round of the Lotus Cup UK. The car's being sent back to the outer paddock and here is the result and it is a win for Adrian Hall from second place David Fenn and Rob Fenn, Marcus Jewell in third, Glenn Sheldon, Jamie Stanley in excellent fourth place, Tom Chatterwell, that's really good to see him up in fifth, the same for Paul McNeely and BJ Chong in sixth position, Simon Deacon and Steve Train seventh and eighth and then Steve Williams in ninth position, the setters in 10th. Rob Boston in 12th, he took the victory in the production class from Charlotte Burridge and Fulvio Mussi with then Ken Savage just holding on in the end to claim third in the production cars from Stuart Plotneck in fourth. An excellent 17th there for Adam Knight, he ran consistently all race long, Ian Berry rounding out the top 20 and now we're rapidly encroaching into those that didn't make it to the finish unfortunately. So Andy Napier, a retirement after all of his adventures. Also, Campbell Casting and Chris Randall not classified despite having been the early race leaders and Warren Scott, a casualty that we had very, very early in proceedings over at Paddock Hill Bend. And there's Rob Boston with his shock of blonde hair ready to take his trophy production class as we get onto the podium, the top three in the race overall. So a super third place to Marcus Jewell. Very, very nice trophies for all of the drivers, so second place, Rob Fenn and David Fenn. Well, Rob <laughs> jumping onto the top step of the rostrum, somewhat cheekily there. And then a very, very warm round of applause for our race winner, Adrian Hall, who gets the kiss and the trophy from the Olin's Emotional Models on the podium. And after they have hoisted the trophies aloft, thus the second race of the weekend begins, and that is the one for the champagne cork. So I suspect that they will be having something of a champagne fight here on the podium at Brand Satch. Well, always a treat for the sizeable crowd here enjoying the action from the DTM cars to see the Lotus Cup UK in full flight. It was an excellent race and sets us up superbly for the rest of the year.